in some shape for the overnight hike this evening. And what are we putting in our flashlights? Batteries. That's right, because power is very important for a flashlight. And speaking of power, why don't we go talk with our old pal, Professor Polytech, for something truly electrifying. Good himmel, good himmel! Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in! Allow me to introduce myself. I am Professor Polytechnic, but you may call me Professor P for short. You are enjoying our trip to the Science Center, no? While it is a fascinating assortment of scientific wonders, none of it would be possible without one simple word, hypothesis. What is a hypothesis, you may ask? Keep your later hosen on already, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. When dealing with a scientific problem, a hypothesis is nothing more than what is called an educated guess. For example, when the apple <coughs> fell on Sir Isaac Newton's head, he didn't know what made it fall. But, and it's a big but, he guessed that some type of force made the apple fall to the ground. This was his hypothesis which helped Sir Isaac Newton come up with his laws of gravity, which only goes to prove that if you do not know how something works, make a good guess as to how it does work. That way, you can have your very own hypothesis, just like Sir Isaac Newton, Mr. Smarty Pants. And I have a distinct hypothesis that I will see you again soon. So until next time, I'll be the same. Well, Wallabear, old buddy, old pal, I understand you took the camper cam up to, way up to Montgomery to the Alabama Science Center to visit our old pal, Miss Judy Getty. Is that correct? And look what you brought back. A genuine, way swell, very keen harmonograph drawing from our camper pals, Holly, Umia, Corey, and Tiffany. Well, without further ado, why don't we check out what you did, hmm? Good morning. Welcome to the Alabama Science Center. The Alabama Science Center is a project of Alabama Power Company, and we're very glad to have you here today. We hope you're glad to be here. Who likes science? Oh, wow, I'm so glad. We're going to start off with this thing. It's called the Envirosphere. Let's all walk up close and look at it a minute. Look all the way up and down. Whoa, right. What do we see? Mm, who sees them? Yeah, who sees themselves? Me. Yeah, right. Okay. What does this thing in here look like? A TV. How what? many? Nine. Nine. Oh, uh, she's counted. How many do you think? Ten. Ten, he says. Looks like a million to me. Sure. Okay, look at all these pretty scenes. That's our country. And here we come focusing in on Alabama. We have such a pretty state, don't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we just need to take care of it. We can either take care of it or we can dump garbage all over it. That's not very nice, is it? No. 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 Uh -uh. Okay, we've got lots of things to see today, so why don't we move along? Hmm. All right, campers, we're at the bicycle generator. Who ate a big breakfast this morning? You know, breakfast gives us lots of energy, and I'm going to see just how much energy y'all can generate. Let's get on these bicycles and see how much electricity that we can make. Oh, they're starting to light up the ball. Okay, Damon's getting, here he goes. Oh, I can see y'all are really working hard. We've got this working, the neon sign up over this bicycle and that bicycle are our fiber optic lines. If we can get them to change four different colors, we are hard workers. Oh, let's pedal a little bit more over there. Okay, now I'm going to ask everybody to stop pedaling for just a second. What happened? What, hap what happened to that light? Did that light go out, Dave? No. It did? Okay. What, have we got any lights up there? Uh, 
No. Do you know there's a generator in there? And when y'all stopped pedaling, we didn't have any more electricity. What if your TV set was hooked up to this? How much, how much, of, how much TV watching would you do? Not very much, he says. I tell you what, but y'all, I can see everybody had a good breakfast today. Let's move along and look at some other things. All right, boys and girls, we've got something here that's going to explain conductivity. What a big word. We've got different metals all underneath our big globe. I see some copper, lead. What else do we see? Look, brass, sure, and steel. We've got five different metals, and they're different sizes, but they're all the same mass. Now, they're going to heat up differently, and in just a minute, we're going to turn that heater on, and then we're going to walk around and see which one is going to get the hottest, the fastest. Does everybody see the, the thermometer that's in front of them? Okay, what does yours say? 80.9. This one's up to 82.9. All right, let's turn the heat on, and we're going to see which one is going to get the hottest, the fastest. I'm going to walk around and look. The brass is up to what? 78. Right. Okay. Let's come on around here. Oh, the lead isn't very hot, is it? What's it? It's only 80.3. Right. Moving around. Oh, goodness. Aluminum's getting hot. Well, sometimes it might be getting too hot. Let's give it a little break, and then we'll raise up, mash it down again, and it'll work. Okay. I think, what's this metal right here? Copper. Copper. I believe copper's the winner, don't you? Does anybody's mama have copper on the bottom of their pots? Yeah. Those, that shows, because they do that on purpose because it's going to heat up quicker. Sure enough, and lots of the, most of the wires in our houses are copper also. Okay, let's move along. I spy more zany antics from the Alabama Science Center, but first, let's visit our benevolent benefactor, J. Walter Waldeck. Well, hey there. Looks like you got working on something big. That's why they call it big business. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. How about that there science center? Now that's big. I mean, huge. All those different exhibits and experiments that actually put all those different scientific facts into practice. Which, as usual, brings me to my point. You see, in order to prove those theories, the scientists that came up with them in the first place had to do a lot of work to formulate those theories. Then, they had to practice those theories until they worked often enough to be accepted as facts. You see, in a nutshell, that's what those eggheads in the lab call the scientific method. And what's even more incredible is that you can use the scientific method in everything you do. You want to be a good basketball? Practice free throws as often as possible. If you want to be a great piano player, practice. You want to be a great writer? painter or scientist? Fine, but you've got to practice. So keep plugging and always remember that you're never too small to think big. Boys and girls, did y'all know that electricity is everywhere? I think you know that, because if we go running across the carpet and I reach out and touch you, what's going to happen? You're going to get shocked. Right. Well, we're going to measure some things, and first we're going to talk about when we get hot and sweaty, what happens to the palms of our hands? They get warm, and do our hands feel kind of wet? And they feel wet and gooky. We don't like it, do we? Okay. And we lo our body loses salt. Well, when salt 
and moisture touch two different metals, a chemical reaction takes place just like in a little battery that you might use for a flashlight. And today, I just want to see how charged up everybody is. And we're going to start with Damon. Damon, would you put one hand right there and put your other hand on there? Okay. Damon has one hand on aluminum and one hand on copper. And now that chemical reaction is taking place in the rest of us. Let's look at this gauge up here. What's happened? That needle went from zero and moved on up, didn't it? That's that electricity that we're registering. Now I'm going to show you something. Electricity can go from Damon right on around through the whole crowd here. Damon, let's lift up this hand. Keep this one right here. Okay, you can move around here. Let's all hold hands. And we're going to see how electricity can go from one person to another. Everybody hold real tight. And now put your hand right there on that one. And let's see, is that needle moving? It sure is. Do you know that electricity's gone right through all four of you? And that's a good lesson. You can let go now. If anybody ever sees anybody being shocked, oh, that's a terrible thing to be shocked electrically, isn't it? But you would never want to go up and touch the person if they were being shocked because what would happen to that electricity? It would go to you too. That's exactly right. So we don't want to do that. We want to find the breaker switch and cut the power off. Okay, boy, we're charged up today, aren't we? We can trick it, too, sometimes when we rub our hands and blow on them. Wow, okay, we can come back to that later, guys, and everybody can have a chance. But let's move along now. All right, campers, now we're going to make a design by swinging a pendulum. The thing I like about this exhibit is that it's opposite real life. When we go to draw a picture, you take a pen and you move it across the paper, don't you? Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to try and keep the pen absolutely still. As a matter of fact, this funny looking thing's going to keep our pen still and the paper's going to move. So let me walk around here and if we'll raise this up. Put our marker in here. I think I like this one the best. We'll put it right in here. All right, boys. Let's get our platform swinging in a good, help me out and get this, let's all go in a circle. Okay, all right, now let's let go. We don't want it to touch the yellow sides at all. All right, and we're gonna lower the pen real carefully so our point won't drop off. Here we come. All right, let's look at this design now. Because we swung the platform in this oval shape, it keeps making that. It's like a pendulum. Only each time this pendulum swings, our design got a little bit smaller. That's because of the friction that the pen is encountering each time it goes across the paper. But that pen had moved one bit. Okay, let's raise the pen up. Do that, and shall we swing this thing in another way? Who wants to do it? Okay, let's swing it differently. Everybody give it a good push. Yeah. All right. Now, why don't you put that down? Let's see what's going to happen now. See if we can't make an interesting... Ooh, what's that look like, somebody? Looks like Saturn. So, looks like Saturn. I think that's a good guess, don't you? Because it looks like the solar system. Yeah, there's the rings and there's the sun. I think that's a good idea. Okay, do we want to swing it in another direction? This way, back and forth? Okay, let's do that. All right, here we go. And we'll put the pen down again. Let's see what happens. Okay. All right. Now we've made a little one, sure enough. Oh, that's good. Okay, and if we let that thing swing and swing and swing till it doesn't swing anymore, where's the pen gonna be? Right, there. right in the middle. That is so true. Okay. You wanna swing it that way? Okay, let's let, let we're gonna let you swing it this time. You push it back and forth. Alright, now I bet this will be our last swing. We'll put that down. Oh, I think we have a fine design. I really like that design. I don't think I've ever seen one just like... You know, you can't ever do two exactly the same. 
It does. It does. Okay. Well, I tell you what, we'll let that come to a stop and then we'll move on to make some lightning. All right, now we're going to have a chance to make some lightning in just a minute. Lightning, you know, that's electricity. A little bit ago, we were all on that bicycle pedaling as hard as we could to make some electricity. We were generating electricity. And then I told you that electricity is everywhere. It's in your body. Well, we can see electricity in the sky at night if we've got a bad thunderstorm. And it appears as lightning. And that just happens when those clouds get so charged up. Ooh, they don't, that's right, chung, chung. They don't like all those extra charges they've got. And so they, they have to get rid of them. And we see it as lightning. Well, let's turn this little knob and see if we can't make some lightning with my lightning machine. Oh, wow, look at that go. We're just making it happen in here the very same way. We're charging that stuff up, and it doesn't like it, and it's just popping around. Let's let everybody have a chance to make some. Tiffany, did you push that button? Let's step up there and make some light. Okay, let's see what Tiffany Oh, all right, enough of that, I think. I could believe we've made enough lightning to, to set the world on fire. We don't want to do that, do we? Lightning's dangerous, and we always have to be careful around it. What is Isaac Newton's favorite food? Anybody know? I didn't hear you. Apple. Way to go. Okay, campers, I think this is my favorite thing in all the science center. What is it? Well, what's it look like? A roller coaster. A roller, and it is a little roller coaster, but instead of having a car with people in it, that, we've got a ball. That's right, Damien. And in just a minute, we're going to crank that ball up, and we're going to watch and see where that ball goes. Let's give that wheel a crank. Okay, everybody come with me. Let's watch it come around. And let's listen to the chimes as it goes through. Woo! keeps rolling and rolling. It's rolling an awful long time, isn't it? Well, it doesn't. We have it so that it won't jump out of there. But it's going around a long time, isn't it? Okay, who's heard of Isaac Newton? Anybody? That's the man that liked the apples, isn't it? He said things in motion want to keep doing what? want to keep going around was the answer I heard from one person and Damon said moving and just all that kind of stuff all that's the right answer that ball wants to keep going and going and going only it's eventually gonna stop friction's gonna yes it's sometime it takes a long time friction's gonna slow the ball down and tell me all at one time what's gonna pull the ball down Gravity, boy, y'all know your physics, don't you? I'm proud of you campers. You are great campers. Did anybody hear the chimes when the, when the ball went through? How about when it went up and around in a circle like that? It hit that thing. Is that kind of crazy when a ball goes up instead of down? I, I kind of it is, isn't it? Yeah, but it's just going to All right. Corey said if it's got enough power. The, the special word right there is momentum, Corey. When it has enough momentum, that ball can go up and around and fall down. Ooh, I think we're a, that's a fulcrum. But it didn't go on the fulcrum. It'll do that the next time. I think we're about ready to hear a big, loud noise. Let's see. Everybody's looking down to see what's gonna happen to the ball. It's going to scare you. Well, that's only because it's going to make a loud noise. Just about now. Oh, it's getting closer. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. I think Bear's getting excited. Oh, here we go. Kaboom! Way to go. Okay. 
Let's see. Do it one more time. Yes, we're going to do it one more time, and we're going to see the short track. Let's take that ball up as quickly as we can, guys. Okay, thank you. And let's all come around this way. Here comes the ball up over our heads. It's going to close up the electrical circuit, light up the ball. Woo! Wham! And we can start all over again if we want to, but we still have more things to see at the Science Center. So let's move along, okay? Campers, we haven't begun to see everything that's at the Science Center, but it's time to go. I hope everybody's had a good time, and I hope you want to come back. We're, lo we're so glad you came up to Montgomery, and that's not a really far way to go, is it? You got right in that car, and you were here before you knew it. We're glad that you came. We want you to come back, particularly with your teacher and your, your class. You have your teacher give us a call. We have a special number, 1-800-554-NEAT, because this is a neat place, right? Sure is. Okay, and Counselor Carl, you come back with them the next time. Bye. This is a Camp Walla Bear special edition of Action News 10. Good morning, happy campers. I'm Eleanor Reynolds, and this is Walla Bear News. Some area high school students are definitely in the holiday spirit. Thirteen juniors and seniors from Murphy High School's Vocational Industrial Club decked the halls with decorations at the Child Advocacy Center in Mobile this week. All the decorations, including the Christmas tree, were donated by area merchants. The Child Advocacy Center helps parents and children recover from abusive family situations. Do you guys get to select the Christmas tree with your folks? Well, if you're about to do that, here are some pointers on what to help your folks look for in selecting a tree. First, jump on the hayride out to look at all the beautiful trees like these at McDavid's Tree Farm. Then look for fresh foliage by the tree's color and how well the needles bend. If they don't break, it's a healthy tree. Make sure the trunk is straight. That helps keep the tree from falling over in the stand. And please make sure it's not higher than your ceiling so you don't have to cut a lot off the top. <laughs> this holiday season, the Jingle Cats are at it again with a new album, The Jingle Cats Meowy Christmas. Listen. <laughs> It's really the meows of nine cat recording artists who often have to be encouraged to perform. They are recording for hours. Then their producer listens, figures out which meows sound musical, and pieces them together. It's paid off. Jingle cats are now out on CDs, being sold all over the world. Meow. <laughs> That's Walla Bear News for today. I'm Melinda Reynolds. Thanks for joining us. And remember, study hard, obey your parents, and be kind to one another. Bye-bye. Well, our trip to the Alabama Science Center certainly was an illuminating experience. We'd like to thank Miss Judy Judy Geddes for showing us around. And don't forget to write us here at Camp Walla Bear, P.O. Box 1548, Mobile, Alabama, 36633, and tell us what you think. So happy campers, until next time, see ya! What's the greatest place to be? Camp Walla Bear. There are places to go and people to see.